Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Exotic Astrology and today we are going to continue with the Bhagavad Gita series and we have reached the fourth verse today of the second chapter and as we saw in the first three verses of the second chapter, Arjuna is now helpless and Krishna is chastising him that why are you giving into this degrading importance? It does not become you. Give up such petty weaknesses of weakness of the heart and arise, O chastiser of the enemy. The word used here is parantapa. Okay, and today we will see the fourth verse where Arjuna tries to counter Krishna. Okay. So many times, many people have this conception, uh, many modern people, that religion means a book of rules and regulations and guidelines. There is no scope of discussion. There is no scope of, uh, I won't call it argumentation, but uh, there is no scope to put forth your point. You are just supposed to blindly follow and accept something which somebody had written thousands or hundreds of millions of years back. Well, that's not the case. As we can see in Bhagavad Gita, Krishna and Arjuna, they're having a dialogue. And they're having a very serious dialogue, of course, but there is a dialogue. So, it is not that just because Krishna is God, whatever he is telling, uh, Arjuna is just accepting out of nowhere. Okay, So, Arjuna is an individual. He is a human being. He has his own arguments. Now, of course, he his arguments are not valid. Uh, and therefore, Krishna will... Krishna uh, is very soon going to smash all the arguments into dust, into powder. That's a separate story. But Arjuna has his own arguments. There's nothing wrong in uh, having your own opinions or uh, trying to understand uh, how how to understand what God uh, is trying to tell us. Okay. So what, what we can understand uh, from the journey of the Bhagavad Gita till now is Arjuna doesn't want to fight. He has surrendered. And uh, Krishna is now going to explain to him why he should fight. Okay, And this is very relevant in our lives also because many a times uh, we also want to give up some things. Give up doing certain things. Or rather saying give up. I would say we want to also get into some wrong activities which we should not do, which will not uh, be in fulfillment of our own soul for the long run, but still we end up doing that. And that's what Arjuna is doing now. Okay, what he should not be doing, that is exactly what he's doing. And he should fight, that's what he's not doing exactly. All right. Okay, so let us start with the fourth verse. And we'll read the shloka once and then the translation. And then I will read the purport. And if time permits, we will cover the other two verses also, fifth and the sixth, because they are this small and short verses. Okay. All right. So second chapter, fourth verse. Katham bhishmam aham sankhe dronam chamadu sudana ishu bhi patiyot syami pujyavara adi sudana pujyavara. <laughs> Okay, so what's happening here? Arjuna said, O killer of enemies, O killer of Madhu, how can I counteract with arrows in battle men like Bhishma and Drona who are worthy of my worship? Pujyavara. Pujyavara means those who are worshipable. That's what is the word. Okay. So Arjuna is addressing Krishna as two, uh, two words, you see. One is O killer of enemies, and the other is O killer of Madhu. Okay, so the word Madhu Sudana means the one who killed the demon Madhu. Okay, and he's telling that these two personalities, Drona and Bhishma, are worshipable for him. So now let's read the purport. Respectable superiors like Bhishma, the grandfather. And Dronacharya, the teacher, are always worshipable. Point to be noted. Grandfather and the teacher, they are always worshipable. Interesting. 
even if they attack they should not be counter attacked wow interesting <laughs> it is general etiquette that superiors are not to be offered even a verbal fight even if they are sometimes harsh in behavior they should not be harshly treated then how is it possible for arjuna to counter them very difficult to say would krishna ever attack his own grandfather ugrasen or his teacher sandipani muni these were some of the arguments offered by arjuna to krishna so basically arjuna is referring to krishna as madhusudana killer of madhu by indirectly he is hinting that maybe, maybe you kill this demon madhu but would it be possible if you try to kill your grandfather ugrasen or your teacher your guru your spiritual master sandipani muni so arjuna is indirectly uh, hinting to him that if you can't do that then how can you expect that i do that okay so here the principle of uh, worshiping and uh, respecting the seniors in the uh, family they, that is being stressed here that is being stressed here okay and uh, that is a symptom of a civilized society that the superiors are respected and they are worshiped and they are also revered okay and uh, we try to take their advice and we try to respect them and give them their due place in the society but unfortunately that doesn't uh, seem to happen these days okay and it said here that we should not even verbally fight with the seniors what to speak of fighting physically and arjuna is the highest of the evolved being so for him to consider uh, fighting with arrows against bhishma and drona especially that is like death for him okay so he is telling that i can't do that and when arjuna was very young he used to uh, i mean when he was a very small boy you know, then he used to uh, go and uh, rush to the lap of bhishma pitama and uh, then bhishma used to embrace him and bhishma used to tell him that i am so happy that you have uh, come and um, embraced me and all these loving emotions for his grandfather is uh, now overpowering arjuna and that is prohibiting him from fighting yes and his most worshipable guru dronacharya who taught him the martial skills and made him evolve into who he is basically yes he is sabdasachi he is dhananjay he is he is arjun he is the unconquerable that is why krishna says his name uh, in the previous verse in the third verse as parantapa which means chastiser of the enemy okay all right so let us go to the fifth verse गुरु महान श्रेयो भोक्तुम भक्षम अपि लोके इंटरेस्टिंग वर्ड्स हथ काम गुरुनी हेवा भुंग्य भोजम भोगा रुद्री प्रधिधान वट डज दिस मीन इट वुड बी सी नो अर्जुन this is an extreme thing which arjuna is going to tell now it would be better to live in this world by begging than to live at the cost my god it would be better to live in this world by begging than to live at the cost of the lives of great souls who are my teachers <clears throat> even though desiring worldly gain they are superiors if they are killed everything we will enjoy we enjoy will be tainted with blood very extreme verse arjuna is telling that it is better than killing them than i go and beg <coughs> okay so let's go to the purport according to the scriptural codes a teacher who engages in an abominable action and has lost his sense of discrimination is fit to be abandoned there you go bishma and drona 
were obliged to take the side of Duryodhana because of his financial assistance. Although they should have not accepted such a position simply on financial considerations, under the circumstances they have lost the respectability of teachers. But Arjuna thinks that nevertheless they remain, they remain his superiors. And therefore to enjoy material profits after killing them would mean to enjoy spoils tainted with blood. There is a very strong statement here. A teacher who engages in an abominable action has lost his sense of discrimination, is fit to be abandoned. Okay. So, this is uh, in some way referring to Dronacharya and also to Bhishma that uh, now in the, in the case with Bhishma was he had taken a vow that whoever is sitting in the throne, I will see the image of my father, Shantanu Maharaj, on him. And I will be uh, fighting for him and uh, I will basically it's like becoming his slave, okay. And Dhonachare, he was personally financed by uh, Dhritarashtra, the king, and he was the tutor of all both the Kurus and the Pandavas, okay. And <clears throat> now because of these reasons, uh, they felt that uh, we are obliged to fight from the side of the Kurus. But they should have not accepted such a position simply based on financial considerations. Okay. So now, what where the flow is happening is the flow is in a way that you want to not kill these people. But the problem is they are not fit to be respected as seniors or as teachers because they are siding on the side of Adharma religion. <clears throat> especially with people like Duryodhana, okay. So, because of that, they do not deserve the respect which Arjuna is giving them, okay. Now, they, 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 were, they are definitely worshipable, but because of their actions, they have lost that status, okay. And now, at the end, in the sixth verse, you see it is very interesting what happens here. Okay, so let's read the sixth verse. Okay. Na chaitad vidma karatan na varyo yad va yajena yadi vano yuya yal eva atva na jigvya samas te vasishtita paruke dharatarashtaha. He is referring to Dharatarashta here. Sons of Dharatarashta. Okay. So the uh, translation is, nor do we know which is better, conquering them or being conquered by them. My God, what is Arjuna speaking? If we kill the sons of Dhritarashtra, we should not care to live. Yet, they are now standing before us on the battlefield. Arjuna is becoming very emotional. Now he is telling even what is the use of killing people like Duryodhan. Okay. The sons of the Tarashtra, his hundred sons. Okay, now let's go to the purport. Arjuna did not know whether he should fight and risk unnecessary violence, although fighting is the duty of Kshatriyas, or whether he should refrain and live by begging. If he did not conquer the enemy, begging would be his only means of subsistence. Nor was there certain of victory, because either side might emerge victorious. Even if victory awaited them, and their cause was justified. Still, if the sons of Dhritarashtra died in battle, it would be very difficult to live in their absence. Okay, so basically Arjuna is now telling that it is very difficult to live without the core of us. Can you believe it? Just can you believe it what he is saying? Under the circums, uh, still if the sons of Dhritarashtra died in battle, it would be very difficult to live in their absence. My God, he has so much compassion for his cousins, you see, even if they did so much wrong to them. 
Oh, that's because he's a great soul, of course. That is the symptom of a great soul that he's always very considerate, very forgiving, and very compassionate to the people who he loves. Loves, uh, and then we see under the circumstances that would be another kind of defeat for them. So basically, Arjuna is feeling that even if we kill the uh, Kurus and we sit in the throne, but that's like a defeat because. They are not there with us, you see. All these considerations by Arjuna definitely prove that he was not only a great devotee of the Lord, but he was also highly enlightened and he had complete control over his mind and senses. Very, very, very important statement. All these considerations by Arjuna definitely prove that not only he was a great devotee of the Lord, of Lord Krishna, this means because in the Shrimad Bhagavad Gita, it is said, Vasudevi Bhakti Bhagavati Akinchana Sarvai Gunais Tattva Samasatir Sudha Harava Bhaktasya Putra Mahatmulan Manura Thena Asati Dhavatu Bahi. This is a reference from that verse because it is said here that he was also very enlightened and he had control, complete control over his mind and senses because that shloka which I just told you in the Shrimad Bhagavata. Now that says, one who is devoted to Lord Vishnu, he is uh, having all the good qualities. Okay, Sarvai Kunais Tattva Samasata Sura, all the good qualities of the Devatas, they mention, they, they manifest in that person. Okay. Mano, Harava Bhaktasya Kuto Mahaguna, Mano Rathena Asati Dhavato Bhai, which means one who is not a devotee of Lord Vishnu. He may have good qualities, but he is going in the Manoratha, the chariot of the mind. Manoratha na sati dhavato bahi. Today he likes something, tomorrow he hates something. Today he likes somebody, tomorrow he does not like somebody. So it's like the chariot of the mind. But Arjuna had complete control over his mind and senses. Okay, because he did not let his mind go astray just because uh, Duryodhan or Dushasan did something wrong with them, which they definitely did. So this means he was a great devotee and he was also very enlightened and he had complete control over his senses. Three things, you see. So that means if you have these three things, the, the symptom will, is that you will be very compassionate, like as in was, okay. His desire to live by begging, although he was born in the royal household, is another sign of detachment. Wow. Fantastic, are nice. He was truly virtuous as these qualities combined with his faith in the words of the instruction of Sri Krishna and his spiritual master uh, indicate. It is concluded that Arjuna was, was quite fit for liberation. Unless the senses are controlled, there is no chance of elevation to the platform of knowledge. And without knowledge and devotion, there is no chance of liberation. Arjuna was competent in all these attributes, over and above his enormous attributes in his material relationships. Okay, So the point here is that Arjuna is very much compassionate towards his uh, seniors and uh, he does not want to kill them, especially people like Dona and Bhishma. But the problem is, they have done certain activities because of which uh, the Bhagavad Gita says that they do not deserve to be respected. Okay. Now, this does not mean that in a literal sense you don't disrespect them, but it means that when they are siding, even though they are great, even though they are very worshipable, uh, but because they are siding on the side of Adharma, religion. Okay, because they sided with the Kurus, because uh, because of financial considerations, of course, uh, that that's more for Dvacharya. And regarding Bhishma, as we all know, he is one of the twelve Mahajans, as the Shrimad Bhagavatam says. Okay, so Bhishma Pitama's character is very interesting. So Bhishma Pitama, although he is externally fighting on the side of the Kurus, but uh, internally he. His heart is always with Lord Krishna. Okay, he is one of the twelve Mahajans. So, 
Why Bhishma Pitama fought on the side of the Kurus? It was not because he gave some vow. It was not because he had some um, any other mundane materialistic consideration. But it was because he he wanted to be uh, seen as an instrument of Lord Krishna's uh, arrangement. What did Lord Krishna try to show through Bhishma? Why was he the instrument? Lord Krishna wanted to show that whoever you may be, you may be somebody power, so powerful like Bhishma, like Bhishma Pitama, he was the most powerful personality to be living in the entire world or I would say entire universe that time. There was nobody like him. Okay. But even though he was there, he was ultimately defeated and at the end uh, he left his body of course after the Kurukshatra war was over. So Lord Krishna wanted to show that whoever you are, you may be like Bhishma, you might have defeated Prashuram also, you might have defeated everybody, whoever is there in this world. You may be so unconquerable that nobody can stand you, but if you stay on the side of Adharma, you will perish one day. Okay. Therefore, whoever we are, however we are, whichever state we are, we should always side on the side of good and not just go and defend those who are uh, creating nuisance in the society. Okay. Especially like uh, people like Vidyadhana and Vidyadhana and company, as I say. Okay. So, because he did that, and of course, as I said, he's doing that externally because Lord Krishna wants him to do that. He's, he's one of the 12 Mahajans, so a Mahajan cannot, can never, ever, ever do something which uh, Krishna does not want, okay? But that's why he is such a great personality that even though many people, they insult him, they criticize his activities, but still he accepts all the criticism because Bhishma Pitama wants that if Krishna wants to use me to demonstrate a lesson, then let him do so. Even if for that people criticize me, let them do it. But those who know the scriptures and know Bhishma Bhagavatam, they specifically know that Bhishma, although he is fighting on the side of the Purus, his heart is always with Lord Krishna. Okay. And therefore, he was, he is, and he will be one of the 12 Mahajans, one of the rare personalities who appeared in this world who will probably never again appear. All right. So that's the point here. And Arjuna, he's, uh, he is, the, the many symptoms about Arjuna's greatness, you know, that uh, he's very compassionate and he's considered, even though he knows that these people like Dona and Bhishma at an external level, they do not deserve to be respected because they are siding with the Kurus, but still he is ready to forgive and forget all the things that Duryodhan did to him and to his family. So that is the symptom of a great soul. Okay. That's the biggest symptom of a great soul that he's ready to forgive everybody anything wrong which anybody has done to him okay or her so there you go if you are new to the channel then please subscribe to it and if you like this video click the thumbs up at the end and if you want a consultation from me regarding any area of your life then you can always go down to the description section where you will find the link to my website to book a reading with me personally okay god is there with you all the time just look to him no, let's just don't look, just read the Gita, then you will be able to see. Okay, thank you very much.